Hi, I'm Michael Shelley, and you're watching Glas uh, Moss in Robbo's Glasgow Gold. Hi, I'm Michael Shelley, and you're watching Moss in Robbo's Gold uh, Glasgow Gold. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Shelley, and you're watching Moss and Robbo's Glasgow Gold. Welcome to another instalment of Glasgow Gold, wrapping up day three of the Double X Commonwealth Games here in Glasgow. A day I'm labelling the greatest day three in the history of Commonwealth Games, probably rivalling only the 1930 Commonwealth Games in Hamilton, Ontario. In uh, Robbo, can I tell you something? Today was an absolute belter. We saw the potential birth of this new nation we're calling Scotralia, where Scotland and Australia combine. We uh, got out there to the Rugby Sevens at Ibrox. We put it out there to the people at half time, and here was their reaction. Now, Robert, it was a very, very busy day indeed at the Rugby Sevens. It was a cracking day. Uh, we had our mate Jumpy in behind. He was uh, really in amongst all the action. Yeah, well, Jumpy is being used and touted as the official mascot or, or emblem of uh, this new nation, Scott Trailer. He's been busy. He got out this morning. He was chatting to the kids at the train station. He even had time to get on Twitter uh, by popular demand. He's now on Twitter. You can follow him at Jumpy Official. And uh, yeah, got out there to Ibrox. He's a hit, man. Everyone wants to get their photo with Jumpy. Uh, you know, whatever country they come from, whether it's uh, Trinidad and Tobago or uh, England or the Cook Islands, they all want the fans all want to get more and more of Jumpy. He was a, a huge hit, and he was leading the the, the crowd in songs uh, and and chants and the whole bit. So I think Jumpy is an absolute uh, a hero of the games in the making, and I think he's got a big future. He said he's there on Twitter. How many followers have you got? Mossy seventeen so far, uh, which is a, a pretty humble start for Jumpy. I expect to see that maybe get up to thirty or forty tomorrow. Let's see that one jump up right now. I might get on there and I'll uh, pop that one up to. 18. Please do. Go. But uh, Mossy, tight security there at uh, Ibrox for the rugby. Jumpy, all he wanted to do was get on that pitch. And I'll tell you what, late on in the day, he got his dream. His dream came true. And there he is on the pitch there. And well done, Jumpy. Uh, a hero. He's the people's He's the people's mascot. He's the people's uh, haggis-eating kangaroo. And it's the world fir world's first. Now, Mossy, with Jumpy's help, you and I actually led a rendition of the proposed new national anthem for Scotch Rally. Let's see how that went. Now look at that. Everyone is loving Scotch Australia. Here's the uh, captain of the Scotland uh, Sevens rugby side. Here he is. He's, he's loving it. He's loving Jumpy as well. Uh, the entire Scotland squad are on board. Great to have them there. Um, so, look, it's very exciting times. Absolutely. And it makes a lot of sense for us to join both countries together because, as, as we know, there's a lot of different uh, towns and cities that have got the exact same name. And we saw that highlighted today when a kid from Cessnock by the yes. name of Dan Ripacoli uh, won a gold medal in the shooting rollo. Yeah, this was very exciting. We found this out when we were at, uh, at, at Ibrox, at the Rugby Sevens. But I'll tell you, we sent Josh Callanan out there on the street to find out what the people of, of Cessnock were thinking in the response to this great feat by Big Dan. We're on the streets of Glasgow and we've heard the word that Dan Ripacoli has won gold. And it's gold for Cessnock. We've heard that there's a Cessnock right here in Glasgow. We're going to go and find out what the reaction is and who has heard the big dance. Let's go. How well do you know Dan? How well do you know Big Dan that won gold here in Cessnock? Oh. Sort of like friends? No, no, we don't know. We know of him as an athlete and things, but... He's a good shooter? Yeah, oh, definitely. Here with Mark, and you must be so proud of the gold medal. Gold medal? Charming, man, charming. It's just every time I've ever wished for do you know him well, Dan? Well, Dan, well, Dan's one of the boys. Cessna. Everybody in Cessna is Dan. Everybody. He's a good shooter. 
the best. He said, maybe shoots like that. What's proven off? What's the man? The man just amazing. You know, I'm just, I'm really in tears here, mate. You know, you've like got me that emotional like time, mate. It's all right. I'm it's sorry. Like Boys, tell Dan. This is for Dan. Yeah. This is for my man. This is for Dan. This is for Dan. I'm sorry. I can't even. We've finally found the party for Dan. Let's go in and take a look. Here, we've found the party for Dan. We're right here in Sestock. And let's hear it, everybody. Three cheers for Dan. Not gold, there you go, Robbo. Is obviously uh, a little bit confused at first, a few people, yeah. but a huge hit for those uh, in the uh, on the streets of Cessna. Yep, great work, and we love you, Dan. And Mossy, that leads on to some more gold that was ha that uh, was achieved today. So I better put one in the jar for for a big big Dan. But uh, Anne Annette Edmondson, uh, she won the 10k scratch race. Mossy, now I got this wrong. I didn't think it was a bike race at all. I just thought you uh, you ran and scratched yourself at 10 kilometers. So I thought it was like, ready, set, go. And it was just scratch and run and scratch and run. Yeah, right. Okay. Turns out it's, a, it's an event on the bike. I thought that maybe you'd, you'd scratch yourself to cover 10 kilometers in, maybe, in total. Maybe. Well, it turns out it's a cycling race. And Annette Edmondson is uh, the new gold medal for the scratch race. Scotty Sunderland, the men's 1K time trial. He cleaned up, got the gold in that as well. And Mossy... We seem to be winning just about every gold medal in the pool at the moment. Women's 4x2, Taylor McEwen, Emma Seaborn, Daniel Fox. In they all go. And there we have it. Australia absolutely caning. And I can tell you, medal tally now. Where's Australia? Top dog. We've hit the 50 mark. Raised the bat, Australia. We've hit 50. Uh, England, they're still a threat. They're on 17 gold. Uh, Scotland's now on 11 gold. So if we combine our efforts, Scotland and Australia. The one that all the people out there want to know about, Robbo. Well, this is 28 to Scotralia and 17 to England. So we're just nosing ahead there and I think we're pulling away. And now it's time for a word from Burns. Some hate meat and can't eat and some what eat that want it. But we hate meat, and we can eat, and say the Lord be thank it. Thanks, Craig. Well, uh, as always, Robo, we have to touch base with uh, those of my blood nut brothers mm. out there. And today at Ibrox, I had a chance to catch up with Sean from Adelaide uh, to talk to him about uh, being a ginger. Here at the Rugby Sevens, got my mate Sean. Mate, uh, listen, tell me, why are the Redheads a genetically superior race? Well, it's uh, many factors, many factors. Virility, uh, strength, uh, and just sheer intelligence. Just being a dominant force. Now, do you uh, feel at home over here in Scotland? We, we call it the, the round, the uh, home place of the Guinness. <laughs> I feel like I've come to my spiritual home. Uh, but being a ginger, I feel superior anywhere. Hi, I'm Mel Paniotu and you're watching Mossy and Robbo's Glasgow Gold. Robbo, we turn our eyes, the hearts and minds of the Mossy and Robbo Glasgow Gold to the purest of sport of all, and that is athletics. Run, jump and chuck. Those three simple words, those three simple actions, and I can't wait to sink our teeth into the athletics program, which, which kicks off tomorrow on day four uh, with the marathon, Mossy. And uh, let's not forget... The Marathon and the Commonwealth Games and Scotland have a very tight bond. Here in Scotland, uh, they gave birth to a fellow named Dunkey Wright. Now, Dunkey Wright, if you haven't heard of him, he won the very first gold medal at the very first Commonwealth Games in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, Dunkey came out, he won the gold in Hamilton, and it's fitting that we're here at the Hamilton Studios, but Dunkey uh, Wright... Born and died in Glasgow. He's one of Glasgow's finest. I'm pretty sure there's a statue that the athletes will run past tomorrow. I'm putting it out there. I'm calling it the Dunkey Wright Medal. I'll be awarding that at the finish line. Dunkey Wright, we salute you. Now, we had a chance to catch up with a few of the marathoners in the pre-camp down in Gateshead, and they had a fair bit to say uh, leading into uh, the marathon. How's your preparation been uh, in the lead-up to Glasgow? Um, yeah, thankfully, it's, um, it's all gone to plan. Haven't been, there's no, been, no illness, injury or anything like that. So, um, yeah, so it's been going pretty well. So, fingers crossed, so I can have a good result on the day. Now, mate, have you competed in Scotland before? 
I have actually. I've been to Edinburgh World Cross Country. Uh, I think it was 2008. Yeah. Uh, it was very cold, that's all I can remember of Scotland, and we had some haggis afterwards, ah. so it was uh, interesting, let's just, to say the least. Well, this brings me to my next question, and um, you know, say you, you get up on the podium again and you go out for a celebratory, celebratory meal in Glasgow afterwards, if I gave you two options, haggis or a deep-fried Mars bar, what would you go for? Well, deep-fried Mars bar for sure. <laughs> well, the word is there's going to be some deep-fried Mars bars out on the course for the marathon too. You reckon you might be tempted to uh, have one of them and wash it down with some water? Oh, why not? Um, finally, just wanted to get you, if you can, to pop oh, on this. Man. Now, Big bed? Yeah, no, that looks pretty good. I, the whole crowd here, they're, they're awesomely <laughs> loving it. Um, can you say uh, g'day, mate, in Scottish? Oh, far out. <laughs> Good day, mate. <laughs> no, I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was brilliant. That's what it was. Yeah, that's good. Now, Mel, uh, tell us uh, about your giraffe. Um, we had a baby giraffe born on my second last day at work. You and Marty? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very special. Un I was the carrier. <laughs> we weren't able to get her on the plane, which is a bit of a shame. So, yeah. You're missing, your baby. You're missing your baby? Yeah, missing the baby. Doesn't even have a name yet. Now, Marty, you've got four kids. I don't expect you to sit in the back seat in the middle very often. Oh, I do. When we're crammed, usually there's two car seats on oh. each either side. So, but we do have an eight-seater, so yeah, there's a bit more space probably. Tell us, how do you uh, juggle having four kids and trying to fit time in for a bit of a run here and there? Um, spreadsheets are pretty useful. Yeah. So there you go, Robbo. Those marathoners—they're a hoot. Yes, and I can't wait to see uh, the deep fried Mars bars out on the course uh, as well. We might be able to jag one of them ourselves. So that's going to be good. Mossy, not only is the marathons uh, kicking off tomorrow, we've also got an evening session as well, uh, highlighted by men's 5,000 metre final, uh, women's para athletics. T37, T38, long jump. Uh, our own Jody Elkington, national champ, who we caught up with in Melbourne in that one. And men's and women's 100 metre heats also get underway, as well as the men's shot put, women's hammer throw, early stages of that. We Can't wait to see all that great running. We'll definitely have to jumping. go to the the, the uh, coin exchange, Robbo, to fill up that uh, oh, pot of gold over there. I've already ordered a bigger pot. And that's not gold, Robbo. No, that's Glasgow gold.